Hey everyone, it's now the middle of January 2024. We got a good amount of snow, not as much here near the trees, but I'd say we got five inches on the ground with a hard crust on the top because it rained after. And then it froze a little bit. When I'm walking out to the campsite and we have some kind of tracks, they look small, maybe a fox, maybe a raccoon, thinking maybe a raccoon coming out here to the campsite we used back in the summer and I've had, I've had some ideas for this tank I think today or over a course of a few days the days are still short and I'd rather not work on it at night so I can show it a little bit better but I think I'm gonna try to make this into a meat smoker you can go to the store and you can buy large pieces of meat or someone is suggested even hanging a whole turkey or chickens in there and smoking them all day around here we have cedar trees which are really good for smoking we have those trees right here which are cherry which are supposedly good for smoking doesn't take much wood to smoke something you can buy a bundle of smoking wood like apple or hickory at the even Walmart for like $5 and that will smoke for many different times. Cause what you do is you create a big fire in there. Once it goes down to just coals and it's no longer smoking, like the garbage pine you might use as kindling. Then you put stuff in there, the good smelling stuff and close the door immediately. So it just smokes and can't get air. So my plan is I'm going to drill a hole here and a hole here that a reciprocating saw could fit through. May also try an angle grinder, whatever's faster, because I know that took a long time to make that with a um, reciprocating saw. So what I probably will do is hole here, hole here, cut, cut. And before I take the piece out, I'm gonna drill holes and I'm probably gonna install hinges before I break that off. I feel like while it's still attached to the unit, it'll be way easier to put hinges. Might be a little more challenging with this one here, getting the alignment perfectly, because you only have the clearance of the saw blade. It's that tight. This is the door, which we will drill holes and hinge it back on like a door, and I'll just make a very simple latch. I'll show you what I've already purchased. I'm gonna step up on here. This hole here, I think I'm just gonna, like that's the good exhaust right there. And as soon as you wanna go over to smoking, I might just put the cap back on it. Cause these propane tanks have a cap. When the guy comes over to fill it, they fill it up. Or maybe, no, that was the gauge. They hook onto that, fill it. Then they put this big cap back on it and it's always full of hornets. Anyone that has propane tanks may know that. Hornets like to hide in there, but I think that'll be enough to smother it. I think these holes won't be enough for combustion, but if they are, they are easily pluggable with a piece of sheet metal and a couple of sheet metal screws. So the challenge is getting this out of the woods. Is it going to be easy or is it going to be hard? Right here, there's maybe an inch or two of snow because it's all stuck up in the trees. Well, it was, and it melted because it's up in the air where it's a little bit warmer, but I think... I don't, I don't think I'll have a problem pulling this thing through the snow. It weighs, if you look up a tank this size, about 300 pounds. Do I believe that? Yeah, I guess that's believable. I'm going to go grab the hand truck. Let's see if we can pull this back to the garage and start working on it. All right, everyone, back at the garage, we have the hand truck. The last time I moved it out into the woods, like two, three years ago, didn't have a problem with it falling off, so I don't think I need to ratchet strap it. Got a whole bunch of blades because I know I'll probably go through a whole ton of them. And in here, this is how we're going to drill the hole. I have a couple other unit bits, but just in case, it's very thick metal. I got that. An extra one. Got a bunch of washers because I'm going to try my best to make a hole that my bolts will fit through. Here's what I got. I got wing nuts. I thought that was a better idea. Once you run this a few times, they're going to rust and they won't come off. I thought that was a good idea. Here's the hinges I chose, got four of them, and here's the latches I intend on using. Yes, they'll probably rust up, but it doesn't matter. I'm sure they'll function many years before any of these, because I'm not using those. I'm going to use these bigger screws right here, and those are the matching wing nuts. Yep, that's my plan there. And I may also try an angle grinder, 
if I have the cutting blades. Here's my angle grinder. And yep, we got a couple cutting blades in there. We could also give that a try. You can see a bit closer to the house. See, we got about, let's say five inches of snow or so. Very crunchy on the top. Is this gonna be easy to pull through? Might have to get the snow blower back out and make a trail over to the woods. The crust is hard enough that this is able to ride on the top. Look at that. It's a little easier now that we got it on the truck. I think we got the hardest part down. As you can see, this thing's very dirty. I decided against using the hand truck, even though that's how I brought it out. It'll be easier to roll it. These little seedlings are so young that it will not kill them rolling it over them. Plus seedlings like this can't really take off unless a tree falls over. Then they'll be desperate to fill that gap going to the sun. All right, everyone, we got it back right in front of the garage now. 
I'd say it maybe picked up an additional 50 pounds of snow. It became incredibly difficult to roll it once we got into the deeper snow. And I had to push it up a hill, which took a bit. Good workout. Now we got to scrape that snow off the front. Take a look at that, the sun is coming out and melting my workspace for me. Let's see if this works, then we won't even have to use the drill or the uni bit. That worked out really good. It generated a lot of heat, melted around the workspace. That cut's done. This one's almost done. I'm letting the motor cool down because that thing got pretty hot. Then I'll change the blade. I think we'll get this whole thing done with three blades, which is a lot less than I expected. This tool works really good. I got it for, I think, less than $10 about six years ago at Harbor Freight. Still hasn't burned out and I've done quite a few projects with it. So that's the way the door is gonna be set up. Both doors are going to be even on that side while this one goes over a little more. So, in the meantime, while the motor's cooling down, I'm going to go ahead and get my drill so we can start lining up where the holes are going to go for the hinges. So, hopefully we can leave a mark on this, even though it's wet. We're going to try. Here it's dry, so good with those. And the second hinge will go down here and hopefully it functions properly. Let's see if we can do good with this one. That. Gotta we got through, we're good.
All right, we should be through. Is it gonna open? Somewhere. It's still gotta be a little piece. Oh, there we go, there we go. Look at that. It opens up perfectly. Nice, look at that. That opened up so perfectly. I had to shave a little piece of this. These are still slightly loose. So I gotta put a screwdriver in there and I'll tighten them all up. I wanted to wait to the very end to tighten everything up because I knew the vibrations could undo it. See that? Lines up perfectly. Now I just have to go ahead and do a little bit of grinding down here because the door gets stuck on this a little bit. See what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get the screwdriver, tighten these, and then I'm gonna go through this crack with the grinder and shave off just the edge of this, and then we'll be perfect. This went together a lot better than I thought, and it looks pretty nice. After a few runs, all that stuff is gonna rust and blend right in with it. All right, everyone, I really, really like how this thing came out. Perfect, it looks nice. Few burns, that'll blend right in. You see now, he's open nicely, doesn't scrape here or anything. See, there's some burrs right there. They're so thin that you can just flake them right away without getting cut. You could get cut on some of the bigger ones. Give it a year, a couple burns, that'll rust and fall off and be smooth. Just like this door down here, can't get cut on that. Just running a little bit, we'll get rid of the burrs. So, I just torque down all of these with a screwdriver. They're nice and tight as it heats up. Things do expand, they could become loose. Doesn't matter a few times it runs, they'll rust up and they'll never come off again. But goes nice. This one closes absolutely perfect on the bottom. The top one was a little bit tight. I loosened it, couldn't make the improvement. So with the angle grinder, I just shaved that away a little teeny bit. But works good enough when this thing's actually running and you want to open this you can probably pop it with a stick but when i'm using it i'll have a pair of welders gloves where i can hopefully move that and you know honestly you could probably leave it like that and it probably would never open but this tank is pretty thick as you can see it took a while to go through that the first angle grinder blade i had was from ace hardware it got here down a little but the second blade went whoop boop all the way there and there's still more than half of it left what kind of blade is that they're definitely higher quality is that they might be harbor freight ones are the is that harbor freight brand i think it might be it's better than the ace hardware brand i can't believe it but yeah and those if those are really are harbor freight those are super duper cheap but yet it outlived the ace one now I probably went a little overboard with the bolts. I probably didn't need that many bolts. I could have got away with just two, one there, one there, but it looks cool. I put all the nuts on the outside so I can visually see if any of them are getting ready to fall off. And now before it gets dark, let's roll it out into the woods. Tonight I'm gonna go to the Home Depot, get a piece of rebar that's gonna go through the top and that's where you're gonna hang the meat that you're smoking in there. This is a big thing. If I ever wanted to smoke a ton of meat. I don't see myself smoking that much. I could put another piece there, another piece there, and hang a lot, because this is pretty big. I believe it's got two and a half foot diameter, something like that. Often when you're smoking, you want to throw green wood on top of it so it doesn't light and burn. You put green wood in there, it'll smolder all day with that nice smoky smell. So yeah, maybe I'll try to find some fresh stuff. I don't believe I have any, but I'll double check my woods. So I took a quick break from working on the tank outside 
Got to come in and load the stove up. The fans are slowing down, meaning the stove is getting cool. A couple hours ago, I came in here and I stirred it up. Gonna stir it up again, making sure all the coals dissolve. And I'll probably dig it out in the morning, get rid of a lot of that. And now it's time to load this fireplace back up. Been heating with 100% wood for the past three weeks. I heat with wood whenever I'm home for more than a day, so I don't have to use diesel fuel, which the furnace runs on. And wood's a lot cheaper than diesel, even if you have to buy it. And I do buy half of my firewood because most of my trees are pine and evergreen, which have half the heating BTUs. And it also burns really fast too. So you wanna do half and half if you have trees that aren't that suitable. But an emergency, pine will do just fine. But I like to load it up like this. And if I load it up really nice because it's a catalytic stove, that right there will go 12 hours on high. It's on high right now. It doesn't have to be, we'll turn it a little bit. You turn it like that, it'll smolder for over a day. But well, want it like that because it's kind of cold outside. This door also swung open twice during the roll, which deformed it a little, but the deformation is actually good. See how this came out a little where I can get my finger behind it? Obviously we didn't put bolts there because this thing has to move and they would probably be in the way. Now that this thing has a lot of play in it, it opens and shuts just as perfect as the bottom. And I don't think there's enough play. Yeah, that it's not gonna fall out. I'm actually happy with that. That rolling did that to it. As far as the hinges on the other side, I'm wiggling it. Not much play, but there will be a little more play once this thing gets heated up because there's these rubber bushings or whatever you want to call it that are going to melt, giving the door a little more play, but that's okay. Bottom door is still aligned absolutely perfect, and that snow will all melt off once we fire it up. Let's go to the store, find some kind of meat to start smoking in there. Hopefully we can find a big thick piece of pork belly, something like that. But someday in the future, I'm interested, can you cook an entire turkey by hanging it in there all day being smoked? We'll find out. Also something I have to buy, maybe we'll have to order it online. Hopefully Home Depot or someone got one. Right around here, I wanna put a gauge. Now, because it's really cold out in the winter, it may not be super accurate, the ones with the magnet that go on, like a wood stove pipe. You may have seen it in my house. I have a little gauge that tells you the temperature. I might drill a hole that has the probe on the inside and a little gauge outside. That's the kind I'm hoping to find today at the Home Depot. Because when you're smoking, you don't want it to get like more than 300. You want it to be low, like 200 degrees all day long. Now that it's winter time, there's not much cover here in the woods. That silver roof in the background is the pallet house that we built back in the summer. And I can't believe it, it would stand some severe winds. I can't believe that thing didn't fall apart because we only built it to last, basically just to make a video of building a pallet house, but it's holding up, it's got a steep roof, 
the heavy wet snow that's on the ground didn't crush it, it all slid off. The only way I see that thing collapsing is if the snow builds up to the roof where it can't slide off. Now we're gonna take some of this wood right here, which we don't typically use in the house because it's aspen mixed with fir trees, which aren't the best. Like I said, I mix it in, but we'll use it today to make a bunch of coals. And we got more than enough right there to start our fire. And I'm gonna bring a couple good pieces with us of maple because like I said, it has half the BTU value, which means this stuff here, the soft wood stuff, the embers it makes will only be around like half of the amount of time while maple makes a better base to put your smoking logs on. This is maple, this pallet right here can just knock some of that off. The snow covered pieces can sit on top of the stove and dry while that stuff is burning. Whoa, this stuff's frozen. Any of my firewood piles that I didn't intend on burning in the house this year are uncovered. And this tree right here, I'll break off all these dead branches. That'll make good kindling to catch this stuff on fire when we're starting off. Also over there, I still have some birch bark that I collected back in the summertime when we were camping out here. Unfortunately, I don't have many birch trees, but birch is very oily and it works awesome for lighting stuff up even when it's wet. It's very oily and it smells like diesel, the exhaust it produces. Yeah, I had to walk deeper into the woods to get that. I don't have any birch, but back behind me where the logging company cut down, basically everything growing is softwoods. Not softwoods, non-pine, non-evergreen. So there's a good amount of it back there I can find. All right, everyone, the first stop before Home Depot, I went to Walmart. This is what we're gonna be smoking tonight. Two pieces of pork roast. Just hang that in there. I'm hoping the Home Depot has meat hooks. If not, I'll make them. These were on sale today, look at that. $25 down to 10 sprinklers. You always buy this garden stuff off season and get a great deal and this brand works really good they don't jam like the really cheap ones that you would usually get for ten dollars during the peak season and i got this salt right here which will cover that in salt before we hang it up out in the smoker see they have a lot of options they have cherry we could try i think i'm gonna maybe go for apple hickory smoke i've had before I know as far as bacon, I don't like that one the most, but I've never tried apple. Will that be good? We're gonna give it a try. They didn't have actual logs, but these chunks will do the trick. I don't know, maybe apple tastes real good. I just bought the last two boxes. They were Now they're completely sold out with that one, but not the rest. Maybe that means it's really good. All right, everyone, so now I'm at Home Depot and I decided to go ahead and get this right here, which is what I'm gonna be making the meat hooks out of. Can't find meat hooks, neither of the stores sell them despite selling parts for smokers. So these are easily bendable into nice hooks that will later be hung up. Uh, I'm gonna have to find a better way to put that in the cart. They'll be hung up on this. I'm gonna buy a copper pipe instead of a piece of rebar so I can easily with a hammer bend it over on the sides so it never slides out of the smoker. And copper can take a lot of heat also, so that's fine. 
All right, everyone. I'm on my way back from the store, and we're gonna get that smoker going. Right now, it's about 7.30. I'm hoping to have the tube inserted and everything within the next hour, get the fire roaring in there, and that fire will probably take two hours to die down to the coals we need. So, once that happens, we'll let it smoke all night. Lately, I've been going to bed at like one, so it should be done by then, I think. All right, everyone, so these things are pretty thin. They could probably be cut with wire cutters, but I got the bolt cutters out. Snap, snap, and now I could possibly put six pieces of meat. Those pork bellies I bought, I plan on breaking them or cutting them in half. So see, I do this right here. Then the bottom part, I'll have a bigger hook like this. And now I'll jam that through the meat, hang it up inside there on this pipe that I'm about to install. So now I can just make a whole bunch of these things just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect and I can rebend them for other pieces of meat if they are inadequate for something I might try smoking in the future. I definitely at some point, because I looked it up and other people have done it, I want to go to the store and buy like a turkey hang that thing in there since it's a very big smoker you can put big things in there so I want to try smoking a turkey all day in there I heard that the longer you smoke something the better it is the more tender it is but the bare minimum is like five hours for what I'm doing it depends on the temperature some people say to smoke at 325 degrees and other people say around 220 it depends what source you look at but there, I just made some meat hooks. Way cheaper than buying them, definitely. So I'm probably glad that I didn't have to buy them. Let's head out into the woods. All right, everyone, we're back out into the woods. Let's see if we can get this pipe in there. Fits perfect, actually, nice and snug. I'm glad I didn't get a thicker pipe like I almost did. Now, it's just about finding that hole. I'm gonna use my headlamp and look in there. How close am I? Actually, perfect, I can just do it by hand, look at that. Nice, got it through. Now we're gonna bend it. Wow. That's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna leave one side out. That might be nice for drying socks or something in the summer when I'm camping out here. All right, let's take some time to load it up. I gotta go get kindling. This extra door is actually good for loading it too. Let's collect some kindling. Just get a good bundle of it in my hands. All right, I'm hoping that'll be enough to start this fire up because that stuff's very dry, the pine I brought out. Not so much the maple, but that'll catch with the pine. Let's work on loading it up. That big door is gonna make this nice and easy. Grab some pieces of birch. All right, we're gonna get that going now, and I'm gonna go in the house, prepare the meat, 
And then I'm gonna come back out. This thing should be raging. I'm gonna throw the better wood on there. Then I'm gonna take off for a couple of hours because I gotta help with tree work. I got called in and it's like, um, it's gonna be like 10 o'clock by the time I get the tree work done. I think it's about an hour away. So by the time I get back after like three hours, I'm hoping for good coals to be able to throw some wood chips on and start smoking. All right, everyone, about 10 minutes later, this thing's starting to rage and the chunks of snow on the edges are starting to fall off. It's starting to go good in there. Look at all that dripping water. It's melting off all the snow it accumulated, rolling it out here. I'm hoping that's enough kindling to at least get some of those logs going and then the rest should just go on its own. As soon as I head back in the house, I'm gonna shut the big door and crack the bottom one so it doesn't shoot a flame because this thing usually acts like a rocket stove. And then before I head out to do my tree work, I'll throw that in and then I'll be back in like three hours and hopefully we have really good coals. Look at this piece right here. Look at it, it's about to fall off. Do I even have to poke it? I can literally see, oh, there it goes, finally. And this is all completely dry and actually too hot to touch. That's why that ice is moving away. Now that the kindling is just about done, the fire got a bit smaller, but I do believe it got some of that stuff burning. You see, there's also dripping water inside because some of the pieces have snow, but I think it's gonna stay going now. I just shut the door, so that still has snow on it. That's still cold. So it's good to let this thing run a while on the first go. This tank has already been burned off. The paint is all gone, any contaminants is gone. But this time around, all it has to burn off is these little rubber gaskets right there in the hinges. The store didn't sell any without that part. Hopefully that doesn't make it too flimsy. I don't think so though, because the pin in the middle would have to literally get smaller for it to jiggle that much. But the door will go down slightly. I don't think it'll be a problem though. Look at that smoke. It's puffing out of there so fast, like a the pipe on a steam train. And once the fire gets going more, that can actually shoot a flame that looks like a torch. This thing goes like a rocket stove. This chimney cap might actually work as a good damper of some sort. Chimney cap actually looks good on it. Look at the light. Would you go over it? It looks like, you know, ever see the sun, how it turns orange during a forest fire? That's what it kind of looks like. It's orange in person. It doesn't show up orange on camera for some reason. If I zoom in, doesn't make a difference. So these tanks can often be picked up very cheap at a scrapyard once their life cycle's over. And they're very thick, even when they're pretty rusty and put out of service. This one I got from Amerigas. When I bought the abandoned house, this was in the backyard. Someone had already stolen the copper off the building. That's what happens to an abandoned building. Well, I didn't want the gas back. I have a history in electrical work, so I rewired the house to run on electrical appliances instead of this. And I only did that to save a little bit of money. And Marigas didn't want the tank back unless I paid the uh, whoever owned the houses before his bills. So I refused to do that. So I made it into a stove. All right, everyone, we're back in the house and here's what we're gonna do tonight. I'm gonna start off by opening these things up, getting them out of here. How much juices are there? We'll drain that in the sink, let it sit in there. The sink has just been cleaned. So that can just sit there and dribble out for a moment. Cut this one open, there we go. Let that one dribble into the sink a little while. I think I'm gonna open them in the sink to get any residual juice that's stuck in the top. All right, there we go. Got that out. Nice. Get the other one out. There we go. We're gonna cover it in that salt which I should have opened before my hands were all covered in raw meat juice. Is it an easy open? Yep, that opened pretty easily. There we go. I'll wash the counter off after. 
covered in salt. I should have got bigger salt. It, from this, I thought it was bigger granules. I guess it was just kind of maybe sitting on Walmart shelf a while. It's kind of hard, and so I assume they were bigger crystals. But this will work. It's bigger than table salt, at least. Alright, the sink is all cleaned, and here's a close-up look at what we got. We'll be bringing this out in a bit. Let's head outside and see how our progress is going. Alright, it took longer than expected, but I think it's at a steady enough burn that it's not going to go out when I leave. I just threw the rest on the top. See underneath, there's not as many coals as I would like to see. I ended up having to actually throw more sticks in there because it did go out after a while. Didn't go out, but it went back to where there was no flames. But now it's starting to actually kick up. Just being in the last 20 seconds I've been filming, it's caught up. So we're going to shut the top door. The bottom one we're going to leave open. doesn't matter if a piece falls out. Everything is snow covered and it's very cold. It'll fall out, smolder, even if it melts a little area. Nothing's going to spread in these temperatures. Everything's wet and damp. So we're going to take off now, leave it like this. Hopefully we come back to some really nice coals. All right, everyone. So tonight we are heading out down this very long dirt road to a house that has a tree falling on it. We're going to inspect it and cut it up tonight. I already went there to do a pre-visit. It's a very simple tree. It's a... Um, balsam fir tree they fall over all the time they're very weak but thankfully the wood is very light so it doesn't look like it caused any damage to the building i think we can get that cut up in literally an hour into fireplace sized logs so they can be used for heating next year once they dry out all right right now it is 28 degrees outside and it is 8 43 in the evening we're about to pull up the road is actually very very icy but i'm gonna leave my off-road lights on and that'll give us pl plenty of room to see. Thankfully I can get the vehicle right up to where we're working today. About to pull into the driveway up right here. Right around the next corner. Alright, we just pulled up. So here, there's more than one tree actually. Only one of them hit the house though. You see right in front of me is a tree. There's another tree there. You can see right against the house. So we're just gonna pull in here. Position where we can have our off-road lights. There we go. Gonna get out and inspect right now. The off-road light should not kill the battery in the hour I'm using it, but even if it does, I have a jump starter. No big deal at all. Although, if I'm out there for a while, I'll probably just leave it idling. I got one tree right here. This other tree here, yes, it caused, the, it did cause damage. Not severe, but it did cause damage. Uh, look up there. There's branches stuck in the gable vent. Some of the trim looks like it's broken. How about the roof though? You can see the marks where it scraped the paint off the side of the house. And down low here, there's actually a hole in the wall. Look at that. You can see right through the building, the insulation and everything. Look at that. Could have been worse, but that's going to have to be repaired. You can see it's buckled between where the studs are. Stud here and stud there. It's buckled a little. Ripped a few shingles off. Yeah, the trim up there, if we zoom in, is visually broken a little. That, let's see how bad the roof is. Yeah, that roof is gonna have to be repaired right there. That's gonna let water in, actually. Here's the piece of trim that we zoomed into broken up top. It's gonna take some images of this before we touch it, right there. Scrape along the house, take a picture of that. Up top, zoom in, take a picture of that. 
Now there's a trailer sitting right here. If this tree was two feet over there, it would have crushed the trailer. Those aren't very strong. Does not appear to be punctured. They got very thin roofs, but the way it fell, I think the branches, boom, that trailer got very lucky. So I got the chainsaw out, just topped off the oil and the gasoline levels. Now in very cold weather, you wanna use, this is actually summer blend. It's not super cold, it's 28 degrees out, but if it was any colder, you'd wanna use winter blend, which is a lot thinner, but don't make the mistake I made. I left it in the chainsaw last winter, summer came, it turned to like water and just went all over the ground. The oilers couldn't hold that thin stuff back in the summer. All right, let's see if we can get it started easily. I haven't used this saw in a couple months. See if it gets going. That's a good sign, it's going easy. Come on. Wow, I'm surprised, that only took 20 minutes. Still looks like a big mess, but the entire thing is cleaned up. There's like six inches of snow on the ground, so if we were to move this to where the log pile is, which is all around the back of the house down a steep hill, we'd have to do it log by log, so this will wait until the spring to be moved, and I can come back with a wagon or a hand truck and get it done real fast. But for the winter, it doesn't matter, but all this junk can be moved by a contractor to maybe tarp the roof. It's not a metal roof. Asphalt roofs cannot typically be replaced in the winter. Too cold. They're not flexible, the shingles. And there's adhesive under the shingles that won't work properly in these temperatures. But I do think that roof is compromised and water will probably get in that. There's a hole right here in the wall. And you can see all the way through, so there's probably sheetrock damage too. And that'll be a spot where mice can get in. So maybe that should be spray foamed for the time being. Squirrels and other stuff's going to want to get in there as the temperatures plunge. The trailer doesn't have any damage. It's got a couple scrapes in the algae, but that's about it. And it's cut up into pieces big enough to fit in a wood stove or fireplace fire pit it's cut up all the way back here the base of the tree is a little more than a foot I'd say 14 inches 16 inches you see where it crumpled and broke there is some rot in there looks like carpenter ant damage also but it does have a lot of rot and water staining on the inside the other tree starts back there a bunch I'm not gonna touch it come spring all these little seedlings you see will grow in and hide all this debris. The edge of the yard, I believe, is there, actually back that far. But I cut this up just so the, the logs can be used for the campfire. Once these things grow leaves, it'll hide any debris here. Yeah, the edge of the yard is actually around here. The tree was in the woods about 10 feet. That one's back about another 25 feet. Right here's the well. No damage to the plastic pipe. And these things are tough. That can get hit by a tree on the top. But that is cast iron. If you hit it with a car, it'll, it'll break. But from the top, 
it's less likely to break. But it's all cut up into pieces that can be dragged off to the bonfire, the rest of it. Maybe I'll make a video of doing that sometime too. But for now, I'm gonna pack back up and I move the chainsaw down the driveway a bit because I wanna fix up another tree that I see is broken while I'm here. All right, further down the driveway, just gonna clean up this little piece while I'm here. I'll leave you guys going in the car and I'll time lapse this. Very slippery road here. I have no idea why the chainsaw is not starting, but every time I use it to make sure it's sharp, you saw how fast I went through those logs, it was like butter. Did all that tree work in 20 minutes. It won't start now, I have no idea why, but while I'm sharpening it when I get home, I'm gonna take it apart. I just took apart the air filter. Without the air filter, it still wouldn't start. Looked at the spark plug, it looks okay. It might need a new smart spark plug, that might be what it is. If I can't figure it out, I'm gonna buy a new spark plug and hope for the best. But let's get back on the road and go see how the smoker's doing. This driveway's slippery. Doing a little bit of fishtailing coming back up here. Back out to the road. Hear that? The ABS system does not like these roads. I'm spinning a lot. Heading back out into the woods. I've been gone for about two and a half hours. Thankfully, I'm seeing some sparks flying, meaning it didn't go out again. And because we see sparks flying, that means we're not even close to being died down enough to start smoking. So, see how it's doing. Wow, this thing's producing heat from way back here. A little bit warm, that tree. There we go. Oh, wow, that died down actually good. I think within an hour it'll be just coals. That's doing good, because if you remember, I was stacked way up inside here. Nothing fell out. This piece tried to escape, but it didn't. I like that piece with the hole in it, the round one there. So I'll leave that door open, give it a little more oxygen. I think in an hour we'll be ready to hang the meat up. All right, everyone, now we're out at the fire. We're just waiting for it to die down. I just stirred it around with a stick couple more chunks but we're almost done with the flame which means it's almost time to go get the meat all right everyone it's time to start the smoker it's time for the smoking process bringing the meat out spilled a little juices on my arm but they look good i'll roll them around in some salt as i put them on as you see the smoker has zero exhaust coming out those little bit of flame will go out as soon as we shut the door. We're going to throw like half of one of these boxes in there to start off with. Maybe add a little more as the night goes on. We'll see how it goes. These hinges will be nice and rusted and probably blend in by tomorrow. It'll burn all the galvanization off. All right, everyone. Time to hang up the meat. The door is dragging a teeny bit now that these gasket spacers have melted away. The door sagged a teeny bit. I believe those are there so the hinges don't squeak, but it's not a big deal, see? Still closes pretty good. Open that up. Not too hot in there. I, I gotta run in the house. I'm gonna grab a wood stove gauge so we can see, but I know it's plenty hot in there. So right now I'm rolling some of this around in the salt, making sure it's still very, very coated. I'm gonna go in here and hang them in there. Yep, not too hot in there. I can reach. Oh, got one hanging. One more. Hanging. Oh! It's so hot that the copper is soft. I gotta be careful putting these on now. I guess I will have to get a metal pipe after all. It's sagging a little bit. The copper cannot hold the weight. At least it's not that hot. I can reach in for a good amount of time. Can't leave my hand in there more than five, 10 seconds. Last one. Ooh, hot. Space it, space it out. Boom, boom, boom. It's getting hot in there. Boom, boom. 
space them just a little bit. And we're good. Nice. So now I'm gonna open up a box of the apple wood. Take a look at what it is. Little chunks, little cuttings from an apple orchard. They cut down dead or old apple trees that aren't producing anymore or have bugs or are sick. And that's where this usually comes from. So we'll dump like half of it in there. Now yeah, the whole box. Just dump the whole box of it in there for tonight's smoke. Uh, where's my poker stick? Here it is. Stir it around. Now it's smoking. Time to lock the doors. Before I lock the doors, let me give you a close look before that flares up. Take a look in there. See how it's bowing a little bit? Actually, not that bad. Shut the doors. That will kill the flames. Now that air can't get in there. All right, shut that. Ugh. Not lining up perfectly because heat warps things. At least the door is cold enough to touch now that it's been open. That's not wanting to shut. Ouch, that one's hot. A few things are a little bit deformed from the heat. Ouch. Come on. It will go in. That one's lined up enough. There we go. Locked. As you see, there's no flame. We killed it already by shutting the door. And we got to get this one to latch. I'll figure it out in a moment. But it's shut. It's smoking. And now we're just going to basically leave it alone for the next six hours or so. All right, everybody, we're back out 20 minutes later. Still going very good. I can still feel a good amount of heat around it. Smoking nicely. No flames to be seen. This is a wood, stage, uh, wood stove thermometer right here. We're going to go ahead and put that on there. For smoking, you typically want it in the lower 200s or around 300. It's probably higher than that now, but it'll quickly go down. Wow, it smoke's making me cry as it goes in my eyes. I'm going to put the gauge on the front like that. And that'll tell us what's going on in there. Just give it a couple minutes and it'll tell us. So we want it to be right around here. And maybe I'll get a more accurate one. See how this is on the outside like a magnet and you can definitely hear the wind. That makes it be slightly colder than it actually is. They make ones that have a long probe behind it. It still sticks on like a magnet, but there's a probe. You got to drill a hole. I might get one of those. I'll be back in like 10 minutes to show you the temperature that it's reading on the surface of this thing. We still got nice thick smoke coming out, running nice. I've only been out here for like literally five minutes. It already got up and hit 200. It's still climbing. That's good. And I will come out here in like an hour or two, every hour or so, and check on it. Make sure it doesn't start cooling down. If it starts cooling down, I might crack the door. But it's smoldering, so I think... It's getting adequate air. That smoke looks good. And it smells pretty good. Look at those thick plumes coming out. And if we look in this peephole, you can see, look at all the current getting sucked in there so fast. It's starting to get windy out. Got a winter storm warning tonight, which is kind of cool. No more flames looking in the hole but it's red hot embers down there. Still smoking real good. Gonna go in the house a couple hours, then maybe throw that in if it stops smoking, or maybe we'll be good. The smoke seems like it's slowed down a little, so may have to use the second box halfway through. Nice. I think it flares up when the meat drips. The fat is dripping, I think, and that's what's causing the minor flare-ups. But it definitely can't combust and burn the meat. There's not enough vintage for that to occur. The smoke is starting to smell real good. We got stuff cooking. All right, everyone. Let's see if the smoker's still going. That's a good sign. I can smell meat cooking. Been gone out driving in the snow for about four hours. This thing's been now running for almost five. I don't see smoke coming out. I might have to add more wood chips, but hopefully it's still hot. Even though it cooled down, I think these are still gonna be cooked. Because if you want a really smoky flavor, a 
and make them more and more tender. You leave them in there all day. But these, it's still pretty warm in there and if it cooked for just three or four hours before cooling down, I think we might be good. So we're gonna bring these in, cut them open, see if they're cooked all the way through or not. I honestly think they will be, look at that. It looks pretty cooked to me. So we'll bring it in the house now. All right, everyone, so we're back in. Let's cut them open, see if they're cooked on the inside. They look pretty well done. They've shriveled up and shrunk a bunch. Let's get a knife. Cut these things open. Oh yeah, that's cooked all the way through. Perfect. Now let's cut the thickest one open. Make sure that one's cooked all the way through. Yep, cooked all the way through. Nice. Get these hooks off. We can reuse those. The two that I didn't touch, I will give to someone. And these ones I'll cut up and eat some right now. Now I'm going to go over to the table and try some for myself. Now I'm going to go ahead and try some of this. First I'm going to try the fatty part, see what I think of that. Awesome actually. Next time I know, I added a little bit too much salt, but that can easily be brushed off. Now let me try the piece that's not fatty. Good. Here's the end piece. It's gonna be pretty hard. Not too bad though. But this came out really, really good and I'm probably gonna go over here and get a whole bunch more. I hope today's video of building a smoker was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day.